The story of money and black people is as old as perhaps there's been black people on earth. When I have conversations with my friends, we keep getting back to this idea that black people do not understand money. Well, in the studio with me today, I have someone who might have an answer for us, in particular as it pertains to women. Uh, Busi Selesho uh, joins me. She is an international accredited money coach at all and has written on, uh, is this a book? Uh, yes, it's a book. It is, Money and Black People. And then the other one is Why Black People Don't Have Money. It's the same book. It's, it's the same uh, book. Money and Black People, Why Black People Don't Have Money. Uh -huh. And how to keep your money in story. Ah, excellent. Let's start at the beginning. Do you agree with me that black people don't understand money? True. We, we, we have been taught not to understand it. Why is that? Because it well, serves a person who has let us understand that we don't have, because then when we don't have, we can then be told what to do. So, it's a long um, journey that we've walked with money. Well, as black people, but also as South Africans. Yeah. I mean, we have had the, the um, uh, apartheid that um, we know that someone came into our country and said, um, I'm going to take over and we suffered in the hands of those people but our suffering was not just about um, life it was money right. it was based on money so our fathers left to go and work in the gold mines in Joburg and Manila. yeah <laughs> they went to a goalie yeah. and everyone in the country was left without a father with a broken family but it was all in the name of money so now, how can we say we want money when we see what money can do? Can't we unteach ourselves? No, yes, this, we this, can. This, this, this inability to understand. The money. good news is that we actually can, but and the thing is that we don't know how to do it most of the time. All right, let's talk about what we need to do in order for us to be able to understand money, which is why you're here. Yes. Let's go. So the one thing is that um, I mean, Steve Biko had said that that the the, the, the weapon is, is the weapon in in the in the hands of the enemy, enemy is our mind, the mindset, and that is where things went wrong. Because I mean, apartheid said that uh, a black person is not actually human, and we then um, learned to think of ourselves lesser. Right. So we don't deserve. We are not enough. We can't do. So obviously, when you need to have a voice, yeah. you can't because you you you've been taught this over a period of time. So the the, the, the important thing is that we can change this, yeah. and there are people who have changed their minds on what they see themselves as. And one of the things that I have seen a lot is that um, there is something that we have been taught that we need to work for money, mm. and we don't understand how money can work for us. Right. So the, the the thing is between ten rands and one million rand there is no difference. The only difference is that I think ten rand huh? yeah there isn't. It's the same thing. Okay. You, you you for 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 a person to make ten rand yeah. it takes the same energy for them to make a million rand. I was about to say can we exchange my ten <laughs> rand for a million rand, please? <laughs> but the problem is the mindset behind that. The 10 rand, I might think that, oh wow, you know, 10 rand is um, money that I know how to make. I, I can go start a business tomorrow and make 10 rand. I can get a job that can pay me 10 rand. I can ask it from you. You can probably give me 10 rand. But when I think of a million rand, I have a list of things that can, can, can block me from having it. So maybe I need more time to make a million rand. Definitely, I don't know of a job that can pay me a million rand a month. Maybe I can't even have a business that can give me a million rand a month. No, definitely, I'm not going to go and ask for it from someone else. For sure, because nobody's going to give it to me. Yeah, anyway. because I know for sure. But there are people who are getting 50 million rands a day, which they are asking from whoever they are asking. But because I don't understand that I can also do the same thing, then I can't. Okay, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we start? So we start in the mind. So what I've done is I've, I've written this book. This book is in two parts. The first part, it just talks about why we are where we are at. Right. The second part is a mindset program. So it's a 30-day mindset program. This program, I developed it after I had used it when I was um, in the deepest of all the money that you can think that. Well, I, I thought I could have. I was uh, sequestrated yeah. and bankrupt. 
and because I had owed the bank so many millions. Sure. And I had done that thinking that I was building a business because we were also taught that you need money to make money. Yes. So I went in and borrowed money over and over starting businesses and each and every one that I started would go well until it fails. Sure. Would go well until it fails. And then one day the bank said you owe us way too much so yeah. we're going to sequestrate you. And then after that, that's when I then found out that it wasn't what I was doing, it was what I was thinking about money. Right. So then I learned this consciousness of money. Then I've, I've created this program. This program is is, 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 is mind exercises. Right. So it's mind exercises that you practice with yourself. Yeah. So, you know... Uh, Before we go there, I wanted to know what then happened when the bank sequestrated you. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know when that leaf was turned. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, obviously it started well because I... Well, I, I started IT. When I finished school, I went and got an IT job and I thought, wow, I've arrived in life. I can, I can have a job and have money. But then, six months later... There are debit orders everywhere. I don't like the IT because obviously I'm not an IT person. You can see how much I'm talking here. I, <laughs> that's what I do. I love talking. Sure. And in IT, there was never that. So I find out that I don't like my job and also I don't have money. Mm. So the next thing that I was taught, all of us are taught that you need to get a business. That's right. how you, you have money. You will have money. Right. Then I went to do that. But then I also did not know anything about business. None of my family members were ever in business. They all just had normal jobs. Sure. So I then started to understand business, learn for, um, business. And I made all the, I took all the advice, like you need money to make money. Yeah. You know, you need to work hard. All the stuff that we, we are taught on a daily basis. Yeah. And I did that. And it landed me with six businesses that had failed. The first one was a property business. And it did well for some time. And, but then when 2008 came in, yeah. I, I couldn't it's survive. No the, yes, that. Okay. And then after that, I started an internet cafe. It went well. But one day, I found that all the computers were stolen. And I did not know that. You that insure those Business <laughs> insurance. <laughs> I did not have a, 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 an MBA. Okay. So that died that moment. And I obviously had borrowed money to buy all those. Right. And go going on, the, the same thing just kept happening, you know, right. I'll study it, it was free. Yeah. but then once, um, the ones I, I saw that it, well, obviously the bank said, no, it can't be, it, it can't, can't continue like this, yeah. and then they, what they do is they take everything you own, Yeah. and they take everything, and then they pay back uh, what you yeah. owe them, and then they, they divide it amongst everyone who you owe, Right. but then what happens is that for the next 16 years, you don't get to buy anything on credit. 16 years. 16 years. So that's your jail sentence. Sure. So what <laughs> happened to you? So in the 16 years, that's when I then, number one, after that, I couldn't get a job because my credit record was so bad. I right. hadn't, I had a degree. I could go and get an IT job, yeah. but I couldn't. Every time I, I got into an interview and passed it, once I did my credit record, I couldn't. So my degree expired on me. I right. couldn't get a job. Sure. The next thing is that I couldn't start a business because I couldn't now go and borrow money for anything. Yeah, I want that turning point. So after then, what I found was that I, I, I luckily at that time, coaches were not unknown, but I found a coach. I found someone who said to me, you know what? Um, well, I told her the whole story and she was like, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. But what you need to do now is to find yourself. Right. When you find what you are passionate about and why you are here, that's where your money lies. Right. And today I'm talking to you, the best thing that I love to do the most gives me the most money in the world. Talking, coaching, yes. helping others. Yes. And she was she was correct, but at that moment it did not make sense because she said I should need f to find me. That's where my money is, in okay. me. Okay, so you found you. I found me. Let's talk about the program that you found it. So, and obviously after that, I started another business that went well, but then also during um, starting that business, now I did not have any money. So I started this business from zero rent. And it grew and it became a, a, you know, a good business, hired a lot of people, got um, everything in place. Now, I then found out that I was also just working way too hard <laughs> and I was making sure that on a daily basis I'm, I'm not sleeping, I'm out there hustling, but then um, that ended up affecting my health. <laughs> so once my health was affected, I then... Um, couldn't do this anymore. So I got what is called adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Adrenal fatigue is when your whole body does not want to do anything. So you sure. probably just like sleeping the oh. whole time. Wow. 
feels almost like you are paralyzed. Yeah. And it was because of the stress of just doing the hard work part of things. And after that, uh, obviously, I couldn't do anything. And I was told that I needed seven years to recover. Sure. And after that, I obviously wasn't doing any business. The business continued and it was fine. Yeah. And I found out that I had, before had started, a lot of work in consciousness, in energy. And that those um, courses had taught me that you can use your mind to heal yourself. That's where the program came from. That's where the program came from. So I used that, those uh, teachings that I found to heal my body. And then obviously, I, then I knew that I can also allow money into my life because of the mentality that I have. So now this program has this 30 um, uh, exercises that you do on a daily basis yeah. that will change the way you connect with money, your relationship with money. Right. So anytime you think of money and then you feel that feeling that, oh, I don't have enough. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how am I going to get money into yeah. my, you know, pay my, 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 my debts or pay my expenses yeah then you are obviously feeling a negative vibe yeah and that negative vibe just cause more instances where you will not have enough money so i'm going to keep quiet and ask yeah. you to talk for the next i don't know how many minutes <laughs> these 30 steps yeah <laughs> well Go. obviously it's, it's 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 not easy just for for me to say the 30 steps you know like that but i'll give you an just idea just summarize please yeah. yes yeah i'll give you an idea so one of the things is that um like the, the whole thing of 10 rand and, and 1 million rand. So, you have 10 rand and you definitely know that you can have 10 rand. So, that is not a problem. You probably have 10 rand in your pocket because you believe that 10 rand is fine. Right. So, you don't have 1 million rand because 1 million rand is way too big for you. So, what we will do in that case is that we will then say, what are all the beliefs that you have or all the uh, challenges you see between you and the 1 million? Uh -huh. So you will then list them all down. So if you think I don't have enough education, if you think I'm black, if you think um, I, I don't stay in Gauteng, if you think um, I'm a woman, if you think, I mean, all the things that you could think, oh, I don't know how to make the 10 million rand, or just fill this block that I don't even know how a million rand looks like. Yeah. I've never seen one. Yeah. How am I going to make it? So you list everything because each and everything that you 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 thinking it can't get you to the million rent it can't and so what when you've listed them all the one yeah. thing is that in your mind you accept them yeah. because there's one thing that we normally do and a lot of times we see even now the country is, is, is suffering through a lot of depression but depression is when you try to run from pain and then you get to suffering mm. so normally we don't even want to accept that we are thinking that a million rand is big mm. we just be like it is big but no one wants to like own it so once you've written it down you own them but then now the thing is that the day you're going to have a million rand is when the list is clean yeah so you go from one you go from number one to whatever number yeah. and in each of them you do a simple three-step thing where you ask yourself is this factual right so is it factual that you can't have a million rent because you're a woman? It sounds like a mental, strong mental exercise. Yes, it is. It's a no. thing. And it's 30 of these. This is just one. Sure. <laughs> so it's a lot sure. of work. But when you do it, you really clean up your mind. How long does it take? Well, it ta it's supposed to take 30 days, but it, take more than, it takes more than 30 days. I was going to say days. because it takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. And it's a lot of emotion. Oh, oh, because oh, oh. that is where we've had it. So hence the book says how to heal your money story. Yeah. You need to heal where it went wrong. And it's not in 2018 that it went wrong. It went wrong when apartheid started in South Africa. What would you say to someone who would say, these are a lot of words. Hey, give me something practical that I can work with. Yeah. Well, this is practical. This is totally practical because once you finish doing this, all of a sudden you're going to, like I'm saying now, you're going to ask yourself, is this a true, is this a factual thing that I, because I'm a woman, I can't have a million rent? Yeah. Is it factual? No. Because there's a whole lot of women that are, have million rent and there's nothing much difference between me and her, that woman. So why am I thinking that? Yeah. But then again, you then ask yourself, then um, what can I do about this? Right. And then you then then we'll start to look at the steps of what is it that you do have yeah. that you can do uh, 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 go and, 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 and implement. Right. So let me ask a controversial question. Mm. Who's better with money? Men or women? <laughs> well, 
the the thing is this: once a woman has money, it can go a long way. What? What are you saying? Are you saying <laughs> if I have money, it can go a long way? No, it can't. Are you accusing me? <laughs> huh? So the thing is this: uh, men have been taught that money is something they can use yeah. to win. So, um, if a man doesn't have money, well, no one looks at him. Once a man has money, everyone looks at him. If you have no money, you can't win a woman. Yeah, you can't <laughs> win anything. I mean, you could be the ugliest ever, but when yeah. you have money, everyone thinks you are so handsome. And everybody comes to you. Yes. So, men um, have been taught to do that. Sure. I mean, we see it every day. Men are in jail because of money, because of that. Sure. They, they, they feel like they are not men enough when they don't have money. Sure. And then they work with the good thing is that men use a positive vibe towards money because they like if I have money I'm winning so that's a right. positive thing okay. and normally men have more money because of that positive vibe and also men of course are, are risk taken well you know women actually take more risk but Do they? It, yeah I mean a woman can take risk <laughs> of having five kids and not having a salary and still live life and it's fine that's a risk because you could always run, okay. <laughs> you know, and we know who runs the most. <laughs> the man runs, I'm yeah. so sorry to say. So, but women have been told that money is a security issue for them. Sure. So once a woman has money, she will make sure that she never loses it. So um, I wouldn't say who's better, but um, if a man and a woman can come together and work together, yeah. oh, you see, that would be great. What difference would it make if South Africa were able to effectively empower its women so they are able to exploit the economic opportunities mm -hmm. that people like me do? That would be amazing. One of the studies show that when a woman starts a business, it is more profitable than a, a man-headed uh, business. And also, a woman-led business is more impactful in the community. So... We have a lot of men that are running businesses. But if we had a lot of women, we would be a little bit better. Yeah. Now, if, um, well, one of the, of the, of the, of the topics that I'm, oh, I've been doing this August is saying why also women don't work together in business. Because then if you have two women doing that yeah. in one business, then it will be even bigger. But then obviously there's also issues that uh, women were told also to not work together and compete. I was state. going to say, yeah, there are these <laughs> syndromes that we hear yes. about, uh, you know, one makes it up and the others are, the, their business is to pull her yes, down. Yes, yes. So those are also the issues that we face. And, but then that also is fixed when you challenge your mindset. <laughs> it's interesting you raise these issues because I was having a discussion with somebody else. I, it's a friend of mine, actually. And he was saying to me, Godfrey, have you ever wondered why philosophy has not been taught in schools? Not just in South mm -hmm. Africa, but look out throughout the world. And now you are raising this, and I'm getting disturbed a little bit because now I'm thinking, why can't this be taught in school? Yeah. Well, because, hence, we, 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 we are run by a system. And the system wants us to be in a certain position. And things like that will then mess up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, uh, I mean, the system has gotten us in, in four main areas, which I definitely talk a lot more about in the book. Yeah. It, it got us in our parents' heads, it got us in school system, it got us in the church system, and in the political system. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that nothing can happen before anything political happens means yeah. what? It means that we stuck. So even if you wanted to do something, you are so you, you there's so many houses you have to jump. Yeah. So the uh, the system makes us to do what it wants us to do. But the good thing is that once you come out or you see it for what it is or you have the awareness or your mindset is changed yeah. then you can beat the system easily and it sounds like you're also saying that uh, in order to be able for us to make the meaningful difference and affect a greater number of people we need to shake up all these systems we definitely we need to you know what apartheid was all about including patriarchy yes yes that also is part of it mm. so apartheid was all about fighting and our icons did a lot of fighting and they even died for us sure. but now for us to have economic freedom, we need to change the mind. No one needs to die, but no one also can fight for you. Right. We, it's, a, it, it's, it's everybody for themselves. So you need to fix your mind because you're not going to get any land when your mind is not fixed. 
Okay. You know, <laughs> you, you have made me do a lot of mental exercises. I'm going to come back and ask you to summarize. So again, we are clear about what needs to be done and where one can begin. But I wanted to take you back to something that you said at the beginning. You said there's this concept that you need to work for money. And it reminds me of uh, what someone else said, that the richest people don't work for money. Yes. Money works for them. True. Explain, please. So, uh, money is not physical. Money is energy. Now, if I could give you a simple example, is that in the morning, every day, you wake up, do you ever think of the oxygen that you're taking that it might run out, you might overspend it, it might, um, you need to save it, you need to just have a little bit enough and then if you, you breathe a little bit more, your neighbor will not get enough? No. Doesn't happen. No. We never ever think of that. But the thing is that money is exactly like that. It is exactly like that. It is energy that we all have enough or we all have abundance of it. We can never finish it. We can never do anything to it. But the thing is that someone taught us that there isn't enough. So, then they said to us, but for you to have, you need to work so hard. So, you need to dedicate your whole entire eight hours a day. To, to finding, to working for money, yes. to look for money. So that you, it's not like someone tells you, go every morning and work for oxygen. Oxygen that you already have. So, that is where I say the mind was then programmed in that way, that we go and work for them. But then if you're working for money, something you do have, it's like being sold eyes when you are in Iceland. Why would that happen? <laughs> but it happens. <laughs> so now when we so so what needs to happen is that we need to find the gift that we came with in the planet. Right. When you have found that gift, the thing is that you wake up in the morning and yeah. you go and you broadcast as a, 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 a radio DJ or you bake cakes as whatever. But that thing that you're doing is not for you to gain money. It's just for you to take out something that is so passionate in you and give it to another person. Sure. But then the thing is that automatically that other person will feel the need to reward you. Mm. So there is no way that someone can come and ask for a free cake from you. But when you do this cake because you love doing this cake, it is totally different than when you do this cake because you have to do it. Sure. Okay. I'm getting my head around it. <laughs> While I'm doing that, round up for me, please. So, what I've done over the past four years, well, obviously, I, I sit with someone who says, you know what, I've wa I work every day, but I don't have money. I have so much debt, I don't know how am I going to get out of this. It looks like it's going to take me my whole entire life to get out of this. And I say to them, you know what, it, it, as soon as you have tried everything you could try, because that's another thing. This is so simple, yet so difficult. Because then it, 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 it goes against everything you've ever been taught. Right. And it doesn't look like it's going to work. You know, it just looks too easy. Yeah. So I say to them, once you have exhausted everything, and most of the time I, I talk to people who are actually ready to commit suicide, because those people actually have given up sure. on making it. And I say to them, go and do one, two, three, as in these exercises. So it could be three, four exercises that are mind exercises. And normally when you do them without having the pressure to get anything out of them, yeah. then automatically you start now, what will happen is that you start getting inspired ideas. Sure. When you get inspired ideas, you do inspired actions. It could be a simple action as, let me just call there at MTN and ask them if they have a job. Huh. And they say, oh, wow, you called on the right day. Here's a job. Or it could be anything like that. But, or you think of an idea, or you, you, you remember someone has told you about something, and then you do that thing. But that thing, when you do it, it yeah. it's not like you're forcing life. Right. It just is allowing. It's okay. flowing. So then you end up having the opportunities you always wanted. They come to you. Then you, you finally find the peace that, okay, I can I can now have money and then I can then go and do more out there. And with peace comes uh, the ability to be able to earn more. Yes. Busi, thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for inviting me. Busi Celestio is uh, an international accredited money coach and author. Difficult concepts to grind through the mind and eventually work through the wool. But yes. thanks for coming. Thank you so much.